So there are a lot of different symptoms that can occur with a potassium deficiency. Today, we're going to talk about the most serious symptom that you need to know about. What's unique about potassium compared to other minerals is that potassium is needed in very large amounts. We need 4,700 milligrams every single day. But if we compound that with high amounts of sodium from salt, we can create a, a really bad situation because sodium and potassium work as kind of a teeter-totter. And a lot of people are eating a lot of junk food, high in salt, but they're not eating enough potassium foods. And so this ratio is way off. It's backwards. Normally, you should have at least a two to one ratio, two times as much potassium as sodium. So even if you are low in potassium and you have the right ratios with sodium, it's more protective to your heart. 98 to 99% of all the potassium is located inside your cell, not in the blood. And this also relates to magnesium. Most of our magnesium is inside our cells, not in the blood. So you could check the blood all you want. It just doesn't give you a lot of good information about nutrient deficiencies. Now, why do we need so much potassium? Well, there's a pump that is in every cell in the body. And this pump is called a sodium potassium pump. And what it does is it helps to generate electrical current around the cell to power the nervous system and the muscular system. Kind of like if you go to a dam and you see the water being let out. And so this is why it's so important to have the right amounts and concentrations and ratios of potassium and sodium to be able to generate this charge. And so many of the things we're going to talk about today are related to a lack of that electrical charge to power both the nervous system and the muscular system. So we have nerves, muscles, and the control over your blood vessels as well. I'm talking about vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Basically, the vascular tone of your arteries are highly influenced by potassium. And this is one of the main causes of high blood pressure is low potassium. But you're probably not going to see that promoted because of the money involved in high blood pressure medications. But what you will see is that 90% of all hypertension is what's called essential. It means they don't know what causes it. Well, I'll bet you anything that it's part of that is a potassium deficiency. All right, let me first go through the symptoms that are maybe not as serious, but they can be. And then we'll get to the number one most serious symptom. All right, so we have fatigue. You're going to have problems with your muscles, constipation, uh, tremors, which is a, a muscle nerve problem. The other common problem with the potassium deficiency is abnormal heart rhythm problems. Now, how many people have a problem with their rhythm of the heart? A lot of people. How do we know that? Because a lot of people are on medication for that. You can have various mental issues when you have a potassium deficiency from being delirious, hallucinations, psychosis, and depression. Potassium is also needed to store glucose as glycogen in your liver and in your muscles. When you store glucose as glycogen in your liver and your muscles, you have also a lot of water that comes with it. So for every one glucose molecule that's stored, about three molecules of water are stored. When someone does a ketogenic diet or they go on a certain fast, what's going to happen, they're going to use up that glycogen and they're going to release a lot of that water. And with the loss of that water comes the electrolyte potassium. And this is one of the reasons why I recommend taking a good electrolyte powder with potassium when you do the ketogenic diet. Now, without enough potassium, the blood pressure goes up. Okay, we talked about that. But I didn't tell you this interesting fact about this. Potassium actually keeps the arteries soft, elastic, and it also increases something called nitric oxide, whereas sodium tends to stiffen the arteries and lowers this nitric oxide. So potassium is really important for the tone of your arteries, and especially if you have anything connected with high blood pressure. If you're potassium deficient, you can get headaches, you can get low back pain, right in the back of your kidneys, you can become dizzy, and also you can have nocturia. What's that? That is a situation where you have to get up at night and urinate. With a potassium deficiency, you'll have a tendency to 
hold more fluid, you have more edema in your lower extremity, or it could be anywhere actually. With a potassium deficiency, your pulse rate will tend to go a little higher as well, and your risk for stroke goes up. But now let's talk about the number one most serious side effect from a potassium deficiency, and that is sudden cardiac death, heart failure. If someone has low potassium, their risk for sudden cardiac death increases by 10x. And even if we take a look at people with heart problems, what are they usually on? There are medications that manipulate sodium. And some of the diuretics out there also get rid of potassium at the same time. But I'm telling you, there's just not a lot of focus on this potassium, this other side of the coin that I think is completely neglected in the area of cardiovascular health. Now that you know the number one serious symptom, let's talk about what foods or what things can create a deficiency. Well, number one, your diet. You just don't consume enough of leafy greens, squash, nuts, shellfish, bone broth, avocados, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, mushrooms all have potassium, but also an excess of certain things too. I'm talking about refined sugar and refined starches and refined grains, aka junk foods will all deplete you of potassium. Then you get stress, steroids, gut inflammation or malabsorption, and then we get alcohol. Alcohol will also deplete potassium. So as you can see, potassium is super important for your health, but also this other mineral is equally important for your health, and that is called magnesium. And if you haven't seen my video on magnesium, check it out. I put it right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just wanna clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.